Welcome back. Today I have something fun in mind. There's a cat here looking for attention in the meanwhile. There he is. <laughs> and today we're gonna make something that a few of you Mostify users have requested. It is how to create assets like that, right? A lot of the assets in, um, in Mostify are procedural, they are geometry node based. So we're going to work on that a little bit. I'm going to show you how to approach that, how to make it procedural and how to give it the input that you want as well. Now, about 90% of you guys aren't subscribed yet. So if you like the videos, please leave a like, subscribe, leave a comment and let's dive right into it. So I'm going to delete my cube. I'm going to hit shift A and I'm going to start with a curve and that curve is going to be a Bezier curve. So what I usually do is just go to a side view and edit modes. I'm going to select everything with A, delete and delete all my vertices, right? Then with the draw tool there at the left, I'm just going to draw my own little curve, right? Just to get an idea of how it's going to look. I want it to be in the direction I want with a little bit of a bend in the stem as well. And then I'm going to open up my geometry nodes window. I'm going to close this down a little bit, set this to geometry nodes and we got a new geometry node. There we go. So this is the official Blender release right now, 4.0.2, I think. So we're working with that. So in our left viewport, what we want to be seeing the 3D viewport in the right one, geometry nodes. And to start this off, so how do we get this into like a little plant, for example? And um, you can work in different steps. So with the plant, what we need first is we need some sub branching going on, right? I want some stuff to, um, well, to come out of our original stem. So what I will do at first is I will resample my curve because if you use a Bezier, then you work with the points you have here, right? So you've got the starting point, a middle point and an end point right now, which means that if we would distribute new branches on this, then we will basically only be able to specify those three points. And I want to be able to really get into how many branches I want to have. So what I will do there is I'm going to just draw this out and find a resample curve, right? And then we're just going to join this back up, join geometry. There we go. And connect this back up, right? So now we have two curves. One is basically the low poly and one is going to be like the high poly curve, right? So quite beautiful. So what I want to do is this resample curve one has the points that I want to, well, distribute my branches on. Right, so I don't want to just have this curve, but I want to add some instances on there. So shift A, search for an instance on points. There we go. Now those curve points are instanced and we don't have an instance. So what do we want to distribute on that curve? We want some new curves, right? So the sub branches are also going to be curves. So drag your instances out to a curve line that works fine. And right away, you can see that they are pointing all in the up direction. That's not really what we want, is it? So we want this to be aligned to the tangent, not really the normal direction of the curve. And this is going to be the tangent direction that follows the curve, right? Let me draw that with arrows. This is the direction of the tangents and of the normals is going to be straight out there, right? So it follows the normals of the curves. Now, of course, it is just a 2D kind of thing right now. All right, so our tangents follow the curve and our normals will be aligned in like a 2D plane pretty much. So if I set this, so the rotation, if I can drag that out and just set this to be a tangent, like a curved tangent, this one, you can see that it follows the tangent of our curve, of our primary curve, quite beautifully already. Now I want this to be in a normal direction. Let me just make up some room. All right, so we got this. I don't want to be the tangent, but I want to have the normal. So how do we do that? Well, we need to realign this vector. So shift A, and we're going to find an align Euler to vector node at that in between. And now the vector is just going to be the vector of the tangent. And right away, you can see something beautiful happening, right? So the Z direction is generally the direction that you put in there, right? So our tangent now, and then we can crank it to the Y. And there's going to be like a, well, little, little random still. And the axis is going to be pointing to the normal direction. Beautiful. So how do we make that a little bit more random, right? So we want this to be a bit more random. So let's hit shift A. And instead, we're going to find a rotate Euler. 
right? Or rotate your Euler around a specific axis, right? So we can set this to axis angle, and then we have some options that we can take care of, right? So we can try different axes here, but we can just set the angle first to a little bit of a different value and see what happens. So if we just rotate it around the Z axis, you can see that it's already working quite well. And um, the only issue is that it doesn't keep itself aligned to the normal direction, right? As you can see. So what I will do is I will just crank in this tangent into the axis as well. And there you go. Now, it may look weird from a 2D perspective, but in 3D, you can see that it's going to rotate around the curve, but it will stick to the normal direction at any time, which is pretty much what we want. Now, to make this random, I'm going to drag this out and find a random value node, right? And I don't want this to be from 0 to 1, but we are working in a degrees amount, which means that I want to have this in pi. Right, so this is going to be radians, this is going to be degrees, so a, a full circle is basically going to be pi, right, from minus pi to plus pi. That's going to be a full rotation, and we get some nice random alignments there. Now, you can always just change that seed if you're not happy with the results, but you can see it works quite nicely. All right, so next up, I got, well, I got a good feeling that I want to align this more to the actual tangent direction anyway. Which means that we need to do a little bit of a mixing here, right? So if I drag this out down a little bit, what do we have right now? We got our tangent input of the curve. We're aligning that to the normals. And then we're rotating that around the tangent again. Okay? And I want to align these a bit more into the tangent direction, right? So if you hit Shift A, we actually got a vector math mix or vector mix, I guess. If we just find a mix and then a vector, a mix vector, we can actually mix two vectors together, all right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just duplicate this, I guess, right? Align order to vector. Um, I'm going to duplicate these two, all right? Control shift D. And I'm going to replace this to the Z direction, which is going to be the tangent direction. And now for the random value, I want them to be both random. But if we use the same random value input for both rotations, then they will have got the same input for every instance, pretty much, right? So both Eulers will have the same seed for every instance. Now we can mix these two together, right? So I'm going to crank this in B. This in A, this in B. And I can actually just realign that to the rotation all right so you can see that how further we take this into the z or the factor one direction and the tangent direction the more they're going to be aligned with the tangent as you can see all right and if i crank this more to zero it's going to be more into that normal direction right so this is going to be like a value you can control yourself pretty much all right so this is going to be an input of our geometry node 3 at some point so something like this is looking quite decent and then we can just to a different seat if we like that to be happening. There we go. This is a great start. I'm going to save my file real quick and call it plant gen, I guess. Plant generator. So now we got that rotation and, and the alignment set up pretty nicely. So what do we do next? All right. So I want to create different inputs for my plants because I want to be able to control this later. So right away, I'm going to start making some inputs and cleaning up my geometry nodes a little bit. So for my inputs, first thing I want is the amount of branches, right? So I'm going to drag this into the count, right? And I'm going to hit shift A or not shift A. I'm going to select my input, go to the group section, and I'm going to name this sub branch density there we go so now if i go to my modifiers and crank that number up we're going to have more sub branches and that is beautiful all right so if you want that to be a little bit more random we can always just crank out that selection and go to a random value right and crank the boolean let's say up a little bit to 0.75 maybe all right that means that for a quarter of our points on the curve, there won't be any branches. Gives it a little bit more randomness there, okay? So this section right here, this, this, and this is going to be, well, let's control J that to create a new frame. And this is going to be our sub branch spawn, all right? It spawns. And then this is going to take care of the rotations, right? So I'm going to group that all together or, well, just in a frame. There we go. This is going to be F2, our rotation value. 
Beautiful, right? So now at least we know what's happening in which part. Amazing. So I want to have a different seed as well. There we go. Random seed. It's always nice for any kind of setup. Okay, so that will control that. And then this factor is something I want to control as well. So add that to the group inputs and name this um, rotation alignment, right? That will do. That will at least tell me what I need to know. So beautiful. Now we got a little bit of a setup and we're going to go to the next step, which is going to be making those branches a little bit more diverse a little bit more random so to do that i will need to first realize those instances right so otherwise we won't be able to access all the information individually but we will be able to control well each branch will be controlled at the same value right because it's all the same instance so we need to realize that so realize instance there we go and now we can control each and every one of those so what i want to do first is let's say we want to add a little bit of a gravity right so the branches are a little bit more down at those endpoints because we will have some density from leaves and stuff which means that our branch will bend down a little bit so how do we do that well right now we added a curve line and keep in mind that our curve line only will have two points a start and an end point so if you want to create some like something like a curve shape we need more points so shift a and resample your curve to a value, well, let's start off with 10. It doesn't matter. So let's just drag this out. And so now we can actually set a position of our curve, right? So Shift A, set position. There we go. And now for the offset, we want this Z value to be a little bit different for every point on the curve, right? So let's drag this out to a combined X, Y, Z, which means we can control the Z value individually. Now we're gonna drag this down to like 0.6. You can see our entire sub-branching is going to move down, which is not really what we want to do. What I want to do is to only have my endpoints move down. All right, so how do we do that? Well, we are going to use a little bit of a vector math. So shift A, vector math. All right, there we go. And we're going to set this to scale. And if I set this to zero now, you can see nothing is going to move down. Set this to one, everything moves down. And what I want to do is I want to control this scale with the position of the point on that curve, right? Which means that the starting point here, I don't want that to move down. And the end point here, I want that to move down, right? And that is something we can control with the spline parameter, the factor, right? So if we have the factor value, the spline parameter, so if I add that real quick, spline parameter, this factor value is basically going to be zero at the start of our curve, to one at the end of the curve, right? And all the values, of course, in between there. And that means that if we use that for the scale inputs, we are actually going to be able to scale the starting points with zero and the end points with one, right? So if I do that, if I use the factor for the scale there, you can see that right away something is happening, right? Those endpoints are gonna be moving down, right? You can see only the endpoints, the starting points will stay right in place on the curve. Now, right now, that is a straight line. Right, that's not really what, what we want to have. We want to be a bit curvy there. So how do we do that? Well, the factor is something we can use to control, um, well, a float curve, right? So if we hit Shift A and find a float curve here and drag that in between, we can actually start controlling the curve of how this looks, right? So that depends on the shape of the plant you want to have. So if I go with basic, um, basic gravity pretty much, I'm just going to set it like this, right? The It's gonna go on and on and on. It's, it's heavier and heavier the farther it is and thinner and thinner the further it is as well, right? Branches usually are thinner at the end points than they are at the starting points. And then they will bend more because they will have more weight but less strength to keep it in place, right? So something like this looks pretty decent to me. All right, so next up, I actually wanna be able to control this a bit more. All right, so this, let's just join this up real quick. Control J, this is going to be our branch gravity, I guess. And this has to be in that frame too. There we go, branch gravity. And that is something we will use later as well. So just drag that down a little bit. So what I wanna do first is every branch right now has the same exact length, right? And that's not really something that I wanna have. I wanna have a little bit of a 
variety in length. And we can do that two ways, right? We can trim a curve or we can actually rescale our line before we turn it into a resampled curve, right? So both ways work, but if we use a trim curve here at the end, let's see, maybe we can use it in front of the resample. That would actually be perfect. If we now crank down this endpoint, you can see that we can actually scale down our curves a little bit and they will be trimmed down to zero pretty much. All right, so if I mute my set position and I will trim this down, you can see that our length eventually will be zero. Beautiful. So this is something that works quite well. Now I want this trim curve to be random, right? So I'm going to set this to be a random value. There we go. Random value for my trim curve. And I want this to be from like 0.3 to 1. Now I don't want my short curves to have the same strength of gravity. I want them to be a little bit less bending down. So how do we do that? Quite easy. All we need to do is get the spline length. After the trim curve, we're ending up with the different lengths of our spline, right? Each spline will have its own length. And we can use that to, well, control the gravity as well. The longer the spline, the more it is affected by gravity. So we need another scale value there. And we're going to scale this... And I want to scale this value with the length of my spline. So drag that out, spline length. There we go. So the longer the spline is, the stronger our gravity is going to be, right? So look at this short curve there. If I disconnect this, it's going to be moving a lot more down. And if I actually add this in between, it's going to be better, all right? Beautiful. And we can even just affect this value a little bit if we'd like that. So... I think it is a bit too much aligned to and our the value that we're going to scale this with just crank is this going down to be a little one bit. at first, right? That's just going right. to be the same. And we can always there. crank that up if we'd like. That's up to you. Right, so that was part one. It's not really a plant or a tree yet, but we got the, the foundation set up, right? That's the important part, the actual curve part, the part that is going to be procedural, meaning that we can just draw curves and the entire plant or tree will be formed from that single curve. That is the real goal. So if you like this, please leave a like, a comment, subscribe. I'll enjoy any one of those and I'll see you in the next part. Cheers.